Okay, so you are now recording. Or we are now recording. Welcome everyone, folks in person on the line. Thanks for uh, your patience and waiting for us. Um, I'd like to make a motion to open the meeting. Second motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Awesome. So, oh, cool. so that's what I was just going to bring up. So, uh, Gary, for the minutes, if you don't mind, we don't we don't need them to be taken in real time. What Robert has done and what I did too, and I think others have, is since we record the meeting, it's a lot easier just to go back to it and just take the notes based on that. Yeah, um, that, that I can do. Okay. All right. Appreciate that. It's a lot easier anyway, because that way, like, you know, whatever comes up or if you have to move around. How, how many pages uh, normally does, does, does the person submit of the minutes? Just tell me so I know how thorough to be. Uh, it depends. Um, it's an art. Yeah. Well, I followed the I, I downloaded it from online and I took the text and I kept listening, but I ended up with nine pages, which honestly you're depicting what everybody is saying. I mean, you have a, you have a legal document to go back to, to say, you know, yay or nay, but it, I think we're going to have no opportunity to do that after this, if we go back to live meetings without being videoed. Yeah. Do your best, Gary. Like, you know, we're all thankful that we're all here. We're volunteers and you do the yeah. best you can. No, like, no, thank you. No, no worries. Okay, thanks. All right. Um, so unlike last meeting, uh, which you know, I, I think we we all agree was a, a good meeting as far as uh what we got accomplished. I know it was a it took a while, um, but we were able to work through a lot of old business. Uh we shared updates over email for all the changes that are coming and thank you dan thank you lou thank you everyone for um all your support and help in getting those things accomplished um in the interest of time and to not keep all the folks waiting i want to start uh and open the meeting with the folks that we have in person um that way they can you know get on with their lives um and then we can move on to uh, the gentleman that's on the phone uh that's okay by everyone all right perfect um, sir, would you want to? Well, you're okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. Am I, am, I, am I okay without video right now? Is that okay? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Dominic Zagaroli. Um, I reside at 155 Grand Street at the corner of Walling Street uh, in the village of Mamaronic. I've lived here for 61 years and I'm also a former member of this uh, board way back in the 1980s before some of you were even born. <laughs> but anyway, I, um, the reason why I came here tonight was uh, it concerns speeding on Grant Street, especially between Old White Plains Road and down through uh, Plaza Avenue. Uh, speeding has always been a little problem. However, uh, with the multitude of additional vehicles, it gets even worse when school opens. Um, and I would say a lot of the culprits in the morning and the afternoon are, are parents that drop off their children at the French American school. And I've noticed that in the morning, uh, they come down Waverly Avenue instead of going down Waverly and Hoyt. They'll make a left, go up Washington Street, and then go on their way down to uh, New Street. And after they drop off their kids, they take the same route except they come down Grand Street. Uh, I know that there's a posted speed limit of 25 miles an hour. But uh, these cars are actually going minimum 40 to 45 miles <coughs> an hour. And uh, I have problems in the morning. And 
other times during the day, uh, back in my car, out of my garage. And uh, the people would just hop their horn and they just keep speeding, uh, speeding down uh, the street. Um, what might be a solution temporarily, at least, would be uh, maybe put a traffic unit police car at the corner of all in. And since it's the same culprits, I would say that if they get tickets, maybe word will get around at the French American school that, uh, you know, this is not a, a speedway. That's what it actually is. And uh, there's a lot of children in that whole immediate area of uh, Grand Street and Old White Plains Road that go to the French American School and also uh, Mamaronic Avenue School. Um, I, I don't know if uh, they allow speed humps in the village. Uh, I know years ago they didn't, so I, I doubt it very much uh, that they would do it, but uh, uh, something has to be done because you know, with school opening up in three weeks, I would say that the problem just gets just gets worse. So, uh, so I would say that uh, the major streets involved are Washington Street and in Grand Street because there's usually less traffic there. But then, all the cars rush there uh, during the morning and the afternoon hours uh, uh, before school and after school. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for considering my request. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Tiddick. Please see what he has to say about any question. Yeah, Lieutenant Gaddett, um, be curious for your take on it. And Dan, I saw your note with respect to uh, this line item on the agenda. And it, it seems like that's something we should be able to request in short order. But maybe Lieutenant Gatter, like maybe we have to look at the data to see, you know, what we've encountered over there, or like if there's a way to quantify the speed over there, or you know. Well, what we could do is we could put one of our speed trailers there and get get an idea of what is going on over there. Um, having a traffic car or a police officer sit there, um, subject to personnel needs. I mean, we're we're very low on personnel right now. Um, it's being rectified, so if we can, we'll put somebody there. But maybe the first thing we do is we put the the, the speed trailer there and just see if there's actual um, as bad as we're saying. Can I speak? Can I speak? I I I, I would like to speak um, probably as a resident, just because I live on Washington Street to be you know fully transparent. And this has been an ongoing issue. I don't really think we need to recreate the wheel. I mean, we already have from safe streets that they were gonna roll out a speed bump on Washington Street. Um, we've had those traffic markers and enforcers and they're great when you put a big apparatus up in the middle of Washington Street or Center Street and you could see it and you think you're being tracked by radar and you slow down. I wish you could leave that there all the time on all five streets, it really helps. I mean, it really is a deterrent. But once it's gone, traffic picks up again. The streets are far too narrow in Washingtonville and the flats to hold a 25 mile an hour speed limit. And I think one, in one of my first traffic meetings I had mentioned in New Rochelle, it's called Tamathill Road and it's cutting off of uh, North Avenue, cutting through the North End and bringing you out onto Quaker Ridge Road. And they put a speed hump there and they slow down the traffic to 10 miles an hour and it works. You know, we really have to really think out of this very narrow box and figure out how to handle a very densely populated area that's been mismanaged and that is really in need of some patchwork and some attention. You know, somebody is going to get hurt. It's far too crowded and it's a repetitive issue from street to street. And it's something I think comprehensively, that's why I wholeheartedly jumped onto this committee was not just from my own area, but village wide, you know, because we don't have any more land. We don't have any more parking. We don't have any more places to go. So we have to make the best of what we have and try to figure out how to solve these problems. So if it means for the time being, maybe slowing the speed limit down to 10 or 15 miles an hour and putting, you know, traffic apparatus or maybe 
a speed hump or two to help out the residents, it might be a good thought process to, to begin somewhere instead of always collecting data that we've been collecting for years. Thank you. I'd like to add, I'd like to add something here. And I, I've been on a commission now when it's been six months and I've been relatively quiet. There's something, you know, I hear the residents. We, I feel like we have an epidemic in, in the village with, with speeding in, the, in really in the residential areas. You know, I'm struggling with it where I live in Shore Acres. I hear the residents call in. I see a lot of police. I don't know the deal, Lieutenant. I don't know the deal with the staffing. That's a whole different matter. You know, I'm sure Daniel and, and Jerry and Tom, you know, are well aware of that. But um, I, I'm going to just say this. I, I was last week, I was away. I was out in the Hamptons. And, and I know the Hamptons are a little different than the Marinette. But one thing I noticed out there was they were writing a lot of tickets in the residential areas where we were staying. There were patrol cars with, with residents out there being pulled over for speeding in residential areas where people were walking at night, riding bikes out there with their dogs. I don't see that here in the village at all. I see a lot of police on the avenue. I see, I see you know, three, four, five cars going around there, police on bikes, writing tickets, which are great for people parking illegally, making the wrong turns. But I, I, I just feel like the ball is dropped in our residential areas. There's just too much speeding going on. And, and all these call-ins, and especially where I live and other residents calling in, is a problem. And, and I think the police need to kind of redeploy into some of these residential areas. People move here into Mamaroneck thinking like they're, they're getting away from a lot of this, and, and it's really bad. And, and, and I'm struggling with it, and I know a lot of other residents are. And I think the only one that can stop that, we could talk about stop signs, speed bumps, flashing lights, all this other stuff, but we need to be known as a village that doesn't tolerate speeding in residential areas where, where people are, are trying to raise their family. It's just wrong. Thanks, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Um, two, two things after that. One, the police department in the Hamptons is way different community than here. They can afford you know, any kind of police department they want. You're a small residential community. I don't know if you're aware that the police department only recently, check me if I'm wrong, um, hired four or five new, new officers. So they were, we have been short staff for a period of time. Hopefully that um, will change in the immediate future. We'll have more, more police uh, to, to attend to this, number one. Uh, I, I also want to, uh, so Dan respond, Dan Sonoff responded to this particular, and what he said, um, this is a police department item. I do not know what the available data is. So clearly enforcement is an issue. Hopefully, it, it, the other thing I wanted to say is, Dan made it very clear that Mamaronic is not a, you know, the traffic and speeding issues that we're experiencing is not unique to Mamaronic. This is a nationwide, a nationwide uh, problem. So it's nothing uh, that we're dealing with that nobody else is dealing with. This is a big problem. Uh, how we deal with it, how we resolve it, you know, we, we have to figure out. Um, but I think we're, our village is doing the, the best that we can. Hopefully the uh, police department will have increased staff and be able to provide more enforcement. Um, and that's, that's all I have to say about that. I, th I think these are all fair. And Lieutenant Gatta, um, they understand and respect like, you know, that the police department has its priorities as well, but perhaps um, when you guys are making priorities uh, within, you know, the you know day to day or however you guys plan strategy, uh, perhaps we could take a look and isolate certain areas of the village um, and have that, you know, as areas for stepped up enforcement, right? Like Laura tells us that people repeatedly talk about the area, like not only Grand, but Washington, and Boyd, and all these streets in particular, where people are ripping through. And it's a consistent theme and over and over again. So yeah, like I, I know we can't, we can't tell you guys how to do your job. Um, certainly not doing that. Um, but maybe like, you know, when you guys are considering like where to patrol and 
you know, how to deploy resources that these areas in particular could see some more of that staffing when available. Um, I, I agree with you. And uh, I was just, everything we do is, is evidence-based and based on accident reports. So typically how we deploy when we have sufficient officers to do uh, like a proactive uh, enforcement drive is, is we look at where the accidents occur. And I'm just looking at, at Grand Street really topically because I haven't had dug into each accident report. But in the last five years, I have seven accidents that occurred. Three in 2018, two in 2019, one in 2020, and one in 2022. So if anything, it's showing that accidents in that particular area are going down. So how do we account for that? I don't know, but I, I would have to take a, a deeper dive into it. And Lieutenant Gad, I think, I think Gary might be talking about just deploying more police in the residential streets where there are no accidents. And just to get away with the speeding and um, besides the traffic uh, indicated how fast they're going. Maybe, the, I mean, again, we can't tell you about how many police officers are all available, but maybe they could be, I don't know, a small percentage of cars, you know, those type of, those, you know, I, those, those um, isolated roads where there's not a lot of traffic. Yeah. I think objectively what we can do is Lieutenant Gatter, Lieutenant Gatter suggested is put up the speed signs. Like I know it's not as good as the, you know, the ones that are permanently installed, but, you know, maybe we consider that in the future as suggestions to the board is like, you know, identify certain streets because I'm not sure how much they cost, but I've seen them in other neighborhoods where they haven't posted on like a sign. It's really, it's not all that big. I mean, that's, an, that's an agree. I agree with you. Yeah. Like they're an actual sign, but actually change the speed limit from 25 to 10 and to give, you know, put the speed humps where they need to be and, and start implementing and, you know, maybe hitting, hitting the road and, and collecting revenue because, you know, we have parallel parking issues and you have commercial vehicles parked on every inch of a public road. And so, we're, we're, not, we're not moving, we're not moving along to make, make room and, and to thin out so people are, aren't getting into accidents or speeding or, or any of the such or being able to you know, use us as a thoroughfare at fair, maybe culture the, the traffic where it's going down Hoyt so we're moving more traffic around. So uh, Laura, the, uh, the, I think New York State law dictates the minimum uh, speed, what the minimum speed limit can be. Uh, I think they're looking to lower it uh, statewide to either 20 or 25, uh, but uh, that was just very recent. You know, it was, um, uh, I think it was 25, it might be going to 20, possibly. I, I, this was discussed at uh, uh, our, uh, our state manager's conference uh, a couple of months back. Uh, but, you know, as far as, you know, the police department um, and, and speeding, um, you know, the speeds people perceive and the speeds that are people are actually going, you know, can't be two different things, you know, and I'm, I'm not ar arguing that someone isn't exceeding the speed limit, uh, but, um, you know, I, I don't know if someone can accurately say by their own visual observation that a car is going 50 or 60 miles an hour. Um, so I, I just want to, uh, you know, put that out there that I, I don't necessarily agree that cars are going that exceedingly fast, but, um, See, I'm we've not been having it. that same conversation and you could gladly come and sit on Washington Street and experience it or Grant Street. Cars are definitely going at a high rate of speed and especially late in the evening when, when the roads are pretty quiet and, and they're using that. And, and you can beg to argue or differ, but I think my, my, my front camera, my house could actually pick it up and kind of depict that. You know, it's, it's dangerous and it's, it's a recipe for disaster at best. And, and, you know, if you can lower the speed limit in Nourishell on a, through the north end of Nourishell to 10 miles an hour, you might be able to consider it in other areas of the village. I, I think well. that's an advisory speed limit. But it helps and it's a deterrent. But it's, it's not an enforceable item, it's an advisory. It's like when you see a yellow sign. A absolutely, but I slow down road. when I see it's it. It's not a speed limit, that's an advisory speed. You, you should be going uh, for that type of uh, uh, physical, <laughs> Uh, interaction with the roadway. 
right we're just we're just trying to help residents yeah. and trying to help them live a more comfortable quality of life I, I, Dan, I, what, I, don't, I don't think there's disagreement about that mark no we, we totally agree um dan it, the jefferson avenue you were able to quantify the speeds like uh and you know you, you had 8200 8300 reported events there what was involved in quantifying the data because like you mentioned like the eye test is tough to tell but we have data on Jefferson Avenue. Perhaps we do the same thing down on Grant Street. Or well, that, that, was, that was Hillside Avenue. And those were traffic counts that we took on Hillside Avenue in advance of the uh, bridge replacement. So I believe we collected that data in 2017 or 2018. Um, I had something similar done for, um, uh, Tompkins Avenue, uh, I want to say in 2019 as well, uh, before the bridge got shut down. Uh, I, but something like that is usually we have to coordinate with uh, a traffic or traffic engineer, and they do a, a study. And it's basically they put these. Um, have you ever seen those um, black plastic tubes on the roadway? Yeah. But the we usually see. Dan froze. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, obviously these, these topics are going to keep coming up. Um, and I think there's a holistic solution that we need to solve. I think immediate short term, I think the action items that we can come up with or we can ask the police department if they could put up one of the speed signs and ask if they can step up enforcement. Obviously it's not us telling them, but like, you know, perhaps when it comes to decision-making, it's something that they can consider. Yeah, I know you're frozen. I'd like to know how we can implement these advisory speed limit signs. I think they're a good idea. And if, um, what it takes, the commission can authorize them, what it takes to, is um, what it takes to put up. And I think it's, it's a good idea, Laura. No, I agree with that's, you. That's like, something that the commission can authorize. Yeah. People don't realize it's an advisory, advisory sign anyway. Right. I mean, if you see children at play signs out, it's not a, that's advising not you to slow down because children are at play. If there's 100 people, if you get 35 people that are slowing down because children are at play, we're winning. Yeah, let's, let's discuss that more. In, we'll ask him over email, Dan, because maybe there's someone he has to coordinate with, the advisory signs. But, I mean, I think that's something... Oh, I agree with you because I think they're just as effective as a normal. I had no idea those were advisory signs until I joined the traffic commission. Legally, you can. I guess in America, you can't have signs less than 25 miles an hour, less than by a school or playground. That's what Dan was saying last time. And so you could get around that somehow. Well, you, you, you in Washington, Bill, you have three. So you, yeah, you might be able to trust it. You have a school, you have a nursery, French American. Lieutenant Gatt, is that okay by you with suggestions? Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a problem as long as we have personnel and as long as we have equipment, we can do it. Um, I know we moved one of the speed trailers over. It's on the north, uh, 1500 block of uh, Memorandic Avenue in Speed Awareness Week starts August 14th. So we have that warning and that has a record each of the speed trailers. They record the speeds. That's where we can get some of the numbers from. I don't think we have to vote on that, Lou, because it's not a board of trustees. Or do we have to vote to? I um, I would say just make a recommendation. As long as Dan, I mean, Dan will know the correct way. But you know, as I said, make a recommendation and send it in an email to myself and the chief, and then we can work out personnel and equipment to move. I don't think that's a yeah. to hey. gain information to make a, a a better decision later on. Hey Dan, the question, the question was, uh, does the commission need to vote if they want to make a, a recommendation on advisory signs or can they just make the recommendation? Well, it, I, I mean, advisory signage does not require any sort of uh, board of trustees approval. Okay. Uh, it does need to comport with the manual of uniform traffic control devices. So you know, we, we can't just put a sign that says, um, you know, don't speed or don't speed or you know, you're going to get thrown in jail. Uh, it has to be, have to have some sort of something that's, uh, uh, you know, allowable in the manual. 
well, what does that sign look like? Is it, isn't it a standard sign? Like, why is, there I, I, is there a specific sign that you're thinking about? No, I'm, I'm asking you. I don't know what. Oh, well, I mean, it's, um, a specific sign. There are uh, uh, many, many signs in the manual of uniform traffic control devices. Um, so yeah, I, let's get to an answer because we want to get through the sign. No, no, no. You have to be sorry. It's a good question. Yeah. It's, I, I, you can, uh, it's something that, that's searchable online, uh, the manual and the New York State Supplement yeah. Manual, um, but uh, it's extremely thorough. Well, that's great that we can make recommendations for them. Yeah. So that could help with the speed and expedition of it. And Dan, the, the last thing, because we're going to move on um, for, we were talking with Lieutenant Gatta, we want to make uh, recommendation on uh, the speed sign, like you know the temporary speed sign, and uh, the increased enforcement uh, if personnel allows. Do we need to make a formal recommendation and vote, or? Well, I mean, that 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 would be a you know a request to the uh, you know the manager and the police chief. Do you want that to come from me, or do you want it to come from you? It should come from the commission. Okay. Well, let's vote on just to make sure we have uh, agreement on it. So. Uh, I'm not sure what the motion is. I'll make a motion to suggest to the police department to install the speed sign and to step up the enforcement in uh, the Grand Street and the Washingtonville in general. And the machine to measure speed? Yeah, the, the machine to measure the speed. I second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, Aye. okay perfect. So you, you only mentioned Grand Street. You want to mention Washington Street? You said well. Washington Bill. Yeah, Washington Bill in general. I think. Okay, that's that's a larger five area. Five. So maybe we start with Grand because that's where the complaints originating from specifically. Right. And then if. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure because I'm ignorant to how the police department like if they deploy someone specifically to Grand Street. Like you know what I mean? Like I, I don't know how. If they deploy the resources. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that I want to discuss how the police department deploys <laughs> its resources in a public setting. If you focus your request, it, it, it's more likely to, if you, if you say Washington Grand, then then you'll you, you'll be able to me measure the results more easily. Yeah, no, I agree with you. That's not what I, was I, I just mentioned Grand because that's the first street if they come out of Old White Plains Road, mm -hmm. that's available. And they return on Washington. No, they come they in the morning come. on Washington. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. And then in the afternoon, uh, they go down Grand Street, around Plaza Avenue, and then uh, away from the Federal. Try it. And if it works, then you can do it again somewhere else. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for well, thank hearing you. us out and working with us, too, as we try to figure it out. Uh, sir, you want to? It's from 745 River. I have a call because when you walk on the street, the street is too narrow. And I can't get in, in into my driveway. I can't get out of my driveway. And every time anything bigger than a mail, mailman's truck, whether it be UPS or FedEx, they come up, they come over onto my den. I put stones out there to deter it, and still it's not working. I put barricades out there, nothing works. I had to replace my water line and my gas line twice. My steps are broken for the third time. And all I'm doing is requesting a no parking sign here to the top, to the corner. I have pictures, three pictures that will explain everything for you guys, if you need to see the pictures. Do you have the pictures with you? I have them on my phone. And Dan, in the meantime, can you bring up that address on uh, Google Maps? I've seen it. I've seen yeah, it. No, I, I looked at it yesterday. I'll, I'll bring it because up. Because this is five o'clock. This is five o'clock this evening. I did tell happened to look out my window and there was a car parked on the street. Now, the first one is. This is where I would hope that you would, you would place a new sign right in front of this car. That's a guy's gate. That's a guy's gate. Laura? That's all I looked. I looked. All right, now let me enlarge it for you. Maybe that might help. And I, and I also took a ride in. I'm okay. That's my neighbor's fence, right? The front of the car is in my neighbor's fence. 
the next picture you'll say is this the picture or is this the where is yes the next picture you'll say as handlers of sign is if sign is in the middle of the car all right this house is at the end of the yeah block. now the third sense. street this is how to call when you park on the corner you can't make the turn because the street's too now. And as you see, my driveway's right there. I have no access in or out of my driveway. You can see when he backs out, any vehicle, anything parked there is going to impede his ability to get both in or out. Yes. I'm going to expound on, on his, his, his home. You can see River Street is a one way street. This is it used way. to be two way. Right. I right. had no problem with it. Let me explain. Sorry. Yes. So just as he said, it used to be two way, but now that it's one way, there's another street. Coming off uh, first Gary. street. What is that? First street. First, first street. Okay. So the only way to get to River Street is it's to come down first street. Come first street, right there. That's the corner, right? Yes. Okay. No. See, see where that uh, bin is? Yes. That's, That's where you want to remove the parking space, correct? See where the sign is? See where the sign is? You want, to, you want to remove parking where that where that where uh, bin is? Okay. Hey, I, let, I'm sorry. Look. I, I, I think I can explain this. So. Dan, can you go back to the other picture, the other side of the street? Okay, so his house is where the what white is, fence is. Yeah, this blue house, right? Right. Yes. So what happens is as cars are coming down First Street, there is not a lot of room to make that right turn to go up river. And you see where the steps are to the left and to the right, uh, uh, right off the, uh, in the road, there is a water main and a gas main, right? Right, the gas line right, right by the front And so it's what, hap what happens is these trucks, as they're making the turn, drive over. And this is an old picture because you have the rocks there now, right? Yes, I do. Right. So they put rocks there to try to deter trucks from going there, but they still go there. And oh, they, yes, they the destroy way. the gas main cover and the water main cover, correct? Yes. And that's its problem. And it's because of the way the street, it's one way and that's the only way to go. And, and they believe that if they remove the parking where that bin is, it will allow trucks to make that turn without going onto his property. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, Dan, what about the bin sitting there on the, on the public right of way? It is no longer there. Okay, good. Right? The garbage bin is still on the corner. I don't know oh, what it's like that. That's on the left side of the street. All the cars, when they come in, they, in order to get around the left side, they got to come over to the right. And if you look at my steps, that's where my gas line is. And that's, I replaced the line twice on the gas line, twice on the water line. I even put a four by four over there to protect. And I added stones as a deterrent. Now I got to repair my front steps because it's cracked. I have a picture of that too. So you think by removing the parking where the bin is, that will solve your problem. If you take the sign and move it up, see where that pole is, the next one up, right where the back of the car is, the next right there. If you move it up three feet, that'll give enough space for everybody to get around. So you might want to put a sign. You might want to put a sign on your property warning trucks. I did. I not I, not, not to not to I go also put, onto your I property. I also put a cone there. I put a cone there, somebody stole my cone. I have another cone, I was gonna put it there. I don't wanna go that route, that's why I came here. So Laura, you, you said you travel over there situation. too? What, what are your thoughts? I, I was just side saying it to, to Lou and I, we were talking before you came in and I, I agree. My, this is an ongoing issue. It's a repetitive issue throughout the village of America. You're running into situations like this. This is at five o'clock tonight. This is at five o'clock this evening. In all narrow streets like this. I cannot get in there. The car is blocking it. The corner. All right. I cannot get in and out of my driveway that way. Now, if I go back to the first picture, you need to pull that parking off the corner like that. And you're going to find the first picture more often than not. Here's the front of the car. If you could put the sign right here with this. Ask for help. Sign right here with the polish and rectified so that they have a better way of being safe. And it's all about safety. It's about pedestrian oh, safety. Yeah. It's about residential safety. Uh, yeah, I you know, it's this is the first one. 
this seems straightforward to me. It, uh, yeah, it's it, I think we move or I don't think there's a sign currently there, but we put no, there is. No the park. only thing signed there is, is about the street so we, cleaning. So we put a no, no parking sign. Yes. No or even a no, what about a no stopping? Because what if you get a truck that's there? And idols there. I don't think the stopping is. No, no, no. It's, it's the problem there. is they park there it's because there. it's not enforced. Like my neighbor, he lives so, in the house next door to me. He'll park his car on the seat three days, five days, maybe a week at a time, and he won't move it. The only time he'll move it is when a cop comes around the neighborhood. He'll move it because he thinks the cops are checking his car. So we put a no parking sign, and we can have Dan. We can have someone go out and see the exact location to put it. Um, perhaps with, you know, your help, uh, then I think it's straightforward. It, it improves the safety there. Like, Laura, I agree with you. Like, you know, I, I think in other situations, it's the ramifications are larger. If there's more of an impact. Like, you know, for example, like on the Maronick Avenue, like I, like I agree, I think it's right to set it back, but I think we'd, we'd have to deal with a lot more community input as opposed to this corner. This kind which of affects, yeah, this is just one, like you're right that it's an ongoing. And I imagine the street is that, before I came over here and I took a picture, if there's a car parked on that corner, there's only 15 feet. To get down. So yeah, we have, in front of that Toyota, whatever it is, that's a great car. Well, think, right yeah, it seems like the issue is that it's the turning radius of, of yeah, large it's too radius. narrow. Yeah, uh, so this, this one, like in the interest of time, and this is like a, a no brainer, um, why don't we make a motion to improve or widen the turning radius by installing a no parking sign at a location deemed appropriate by, I mean, Dan, you tell me, like, typically when that go to public works, they go out there and measure it, like, or do we have to give a specific distance or perhaps we ask the gentleman? Like, well, it, it, in the code, it has to, it has to have a specific distance. Um, I mean, I, I can, we can look at it and, you know, measure something out and come back next uh, September uh, for the September meeting with a, an official recommendation, if you like. Okay. I think that's perfect. What do you, what does everyone else on the board think? I think it's a, this is an easy one. Like yeah, as far, I think we had the question about the, um, uh, the garbage bin on the right of way. I mean, that's, technically not, not, that's not a problem. Oh, so I, I, but I think uh, there was a question that asked. Yes, I mean, it's, you're not supposed to have stuff on the right of way, but you know <laughs> that, that 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 presence there is not the issue that uh, uh, the resident at 745 is uh, really describing, as he as he mentioned. But you, you see on the front of there's a stop sign. They don't even stop with a stop sign. The mailman nobody don't... stops stop signs. California stops. I know that, but I do. I stop. I do. I don't want another ticket. Most All right, so, the exception. so what we're going to do is we're going to have someone go out and measure and the formal recommendation will come to install that sign. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You see where the sign is now? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. up, going up the street like three feet. Yeah, we're going to have that as, as part of the recommendation. We'll probably have to move it anyway because there's going to be no parking. Yeah. And, and Hopefully, we'll have to find a circuit from here to corner. Yeah. 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 We can't make the motion. It, yeah, Dan said to be specific. So, so I guess that's it, gentlemen, ladies. Have a great night, and thank you for considering my. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hope I see you Friday, right? If I can get out of work, if they, you know, if they okay. let me off out of here, there you go. Then I'll be there. <laughs> we'll see you. Thank you. thank you, sir. No, thank you, guys. Have a great night. You too. Um. All right. Up next, we have uh, the gentleman on the phone. Uh, Andre, Dan, do you mind promoting him? Or I actually think I have to. Never mind. Okay. Oh, I think okay. I'm unmuted. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, good uh, Good evening. Uh, my name is Andre Fridleaf, 120 Beachwood Drive in the, uh, the Knowles section of, uh, of my Maranek. I, I was listening to the, 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 the gentleman about the, the river and first street, maybe uh, a fire truck could be used to measure 
what that radius turning radius should be just uh, as a as a, a quick suggestion that's a good idea that's a safety concern um, the the, the, the reason I, I would like to uh, address the commission tonight, um, at the last uh, uh, trustee uh, board meeting, a uh, no U-turn sign uh, at Mamaroneck and Villa was uh, entered into the code. And, um, uh, you know, since, since then we have to go all the way to uh, the rally uh, uh, road intersection with Mamernek Avenue to make a U-turn to come back uh, to to go home if, uh, if we're coming uh, northbound on on Mamernek Avenue. Um, we noticed uh, uh, since we don't have a choice uh, because the sign is there, uh, we have to live with it. Uh, but no, uh, we, we would like uh, uh, um, to make sure that. Uh, uh, measures uh, are, are taken to uh, provide us with a safe uh, turn at that new location, which is now closer to uh, the straightaway on Manaric Avenue along uh, the Saxonwood Park, which in Harrison, going where the, the bridge is being rebuilt. Uh, the traffic coming around that bend is uh, typically 50, 55 miles an hour often. Uh, and I know that because, or, or, sorry, 40, 45 miles an hour because uh, 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 the, the speed limit on that straightaway is 40. Uh, and a lot of cars drive faster than that. And it takes, it takes the traffic at least uh, the first 90 degree turn towards the left and then uh, the, the second 90 degree turn towards the right past uh, rally to slow down to uh, uh, a speed that is still uh, uh, usually faster than 30 miles an hour, which is the limit. Um, so I guess it's a, a, a speed, speeding concern uh, as in everywhere, it seems everywhere in, uh, in Mamarinek uh, uh, village. Uh, we've noticed a uh, last few days a, uh, a speed trailer that was installed on the southbound Mamarek uh, Avenue. I don't know if that was in response to uh, my wife's comment at the uh, the board of trustee, uh, and, and if it is, uh, we appreciate very much uh, the the, uh, the setting up of that. Uh, uh, sign hopefully trying to slow down the traffic uh the, the recommendation would be uh, our recommendation would be for the traffic to be slowed down before it passes the uh the intersection uh by rally road um because we have to make that u-turn and and uh, against that, uh, the, the traffic, the speeding traffic coming down uh, from southbound. So if, uh, if, 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 it, if it is, if it is a, uh, uh, an intentional installation to uh, at least slow down the traffic or, or, or hint the, the, uh, the drivers that, uh, that they should be slowing down Directly in response to uh, the, the the move of the um, the no U-turn sign, uh, it, it would be it's best. It would be best that uh, that this uh, uh, speed trail will be placed, let's say where the where the fire hydrant is, uh, right right by um, the intersection of Mamarnek uh, and Rally Road. Oh, thank you, Andre. Um, Dan, do you mind bringing up the address on uh, on Google Maps? I think we have an idea, but it'd be nice to see specifically. And then Robert, yeah, go for it. Uh, I'd like to put this in context. Uh, Mr. Friedley is talking about, tell me if I'm wrong, you want to 
have the no U-turn allowed on um, on Norwood. I mean, is that correct? Oh, okay, that's a total, yeah, that's a totally different uh, issue, and I see that uh, this, uh, uh, this, okay. are, we, are we talking about Norwood, or are we talking about Villa? Which one are we talking about right now? Okay, uh, right now we're talking about uh, the fact that there is a no U-turn at Mamaronek and Villa, and forcing us to uh, keep, to go straight past the waterworks, since we can no longer make a U-turn, we have to go make the U-turn at Mamaronek and Rally, and then come back from Rally uh, all the way to Beecher Drive or Teresa Lane, for that matter, uh, 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 on on Mamaronek Avenue. So this is uh, we we noticed uh, uh, in the last few days that uh, there was this speed trailer, and we really appreciate that. But it's in the wrong location. It's by the bus stop where it, uh, it would be more effective if it were uh, in the area of uh, Mamaronek and, uh, and Rally. So here, here's the street view from 2019. Uh, <clears throat> the most recent street views uh, are uh, were taken during the, uh, the still active uh, bridge construction. The construction, correct. Which I think is gonna be finished very, very soon. Good. Um, All right, so, so I, I, you know, I think, you know, the part of this, uh, you know, I think it's um, what uh, uh, Mr. Is it Friedley? Friedley, yes. Okay. So you, you need to drive down Mamaronek Avenue, start to make the turn, the, 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 uh, the left. Well, I, I think it, the, you have a, a speed limit change from when you're in the town of Harrison portion of the roadway to the village of Mamaronek uh, Correct. portion. So uh, part of it may uh, also be a request. Um, uh, we can you know, ask the, the town if they would consider uh, looking at the speed uh, limit on, on if they can change that on their section of the roadway uh, prior to the, uh, the village border to allow for it. It's not likely because going straight, you go on the uh, I-95 on ramp. Yeah. And so you see where that truck is? If you yeah. go straight, you go on to I-95. He's going to 95. And if you are uh, on the, the left lane, you would tend to drive at the same speed as, uh, as the truck. And that truck is accelerating probably uh, to go straight where these uh, cars are. And you see where the three yellow arrows are. You have the uh, the the, uh, the yellow uh, sand buckets, which are being smashed into on a regular basis because people are driving way too fast. And about a hundred feet from there is where you, we're now forced to make that change. That and uh, if you uh, if you keep going, making that uh, that curve. Uh, that's where the, uh, would be the first place that, uh, Dan, can you move the cursor yeah. along Mamaronek Avenue? Yeah. So here we're past the uh, 95 entrance. Yeah. You see where that, uh, the red, the, uh, sorry, the white car is right now? This white car? Uh, the, the, the white car that is on the, uh, it, it's approaching the, uh, the rally road intersection. Can you bring us there, Dan? Uh, I, this is the only white car I see. It looks like the white SUV. Yeah. yeah. Follow that car. All right. Can you get us closer to Raleigh Road? Yeah, there you go. That's the intersection. Uh, back up. <laughs> I'm, I'm confusing myself. Yeah. You need to pan to the left. There you go. Right there. See where the fire, fire hydrant is? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to put the, uh, the, the, the speed trailer 
uh, just just a little bit past that fire hydrant, uh, at least it will it will tend to to slow down the traffic uh, as they're going across that uh, that inter intersection where, the, for example, where that the, the blue van is. Uh, for us to go home, we now have to come uh, to make that uh, dedicated turnoff lane, which you see on the uh, the left side of the, the divider. Okay, was it um, 15 feet on either side of the, the hydrant? You can't have anything parked. I can't recall. Or, or if you want on the, the right hand side just before Rally Road, then, yeah. which is uh, the corner on, on, uh, on the right, right over there. Are we still talking about Villa or are we talking about making the left turn coming um, down on Maranick Avenue to make the left turn onto Raleigh? Are you saying the speed of cars coming around and up on Maranick Avenue is hazardous for making the left turn up to Raleigh? Is that what you're saying? The left oh, turn, yeah. the left turn up to Raleigh or the U-turn for us to go back down Maranick Avenue to, to reach uh, uh, Beecher Drive, Teresa Lane. That's further, that's further up, right? The U-turn is further up. We're talking about right here at Rally. We have to come to here we're because we can that. no longer make the U-turn at Mamaronek and, and uh, Villa, right? At Mamaronek and Villa, we had to fight the traffic uh, uh, going where, the, where that yellow, the, the red truck is, right? We would have to, to sight along uh, the, the edge of the wall to wait until there was no traffic coming to make our U-turn. We can no longer make the U-turn. You have to come to this intersection. Intersection over here, the people, the, the drivers coming down Mamaronek Avenue, they used to be 50, 45, 50 miles on Mamaronek Avenue along Saxon Woods. They haven't slowed down yet. They're still very fast. And I can tell you that because when I come home from, let's say White Plains, I'm driving on the right lane over here. And I drive at 30 miles an hour because I know how tight the, the curve is. People are zooming past me on the left lane. Now we, we understand, Mr. Friedley. All right. nice. So this is the uh, one of the, the suggestions that was said that uh, uh, the, the, the speed trailer location uh, uh, around the village could be useful to slow down the traffic uh, if you want to put the, uh, the the trailer instead of being around the bend on the other side of this bend. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Friedley, Mr. Friedley, we, we understand the speed trailer and the location. We appreciate the suggestion. Okay. We can work with uh, Lieutenant Gatta and the police department to change location or move it down the street. Like we, we appreciate that. But what about the issue that with the, the U-turn, it doesn't seem like this location is the one that your gripe is. This isn't the U-turn. All right, so there are two different U-turns that we're talking about. The U-turn uh, that is right here that we are making to go back home because, because we no longer can make a U-turn at Mamaronek and Villa. We have to come up to this intersection to make a turn and then go back south on Mamaronek Avenue to make a right onto Beachwood Drive or a right onto Teresa Lane. All right, so th this is why we're concerned about the speed uh, because the resi residual speed of the traffic going southbound on Mamanek Avenue is very high and we, we have to fight the traffic trying to make that U-turn. Granted, it would be the same as making a U-turn in and Villa, except for the fact that yes, it is further down, down the, 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 uh, the, the, the road and now the road, Mamaronek Avenue curves towards the right. That's so but the traffic might be slowed down a little, bit, a little bit further and drive past at 35 miles an hour instead of 40 or 45 miles in this intersection. Okay. Um, so, so you're saying the speed is what makes the U-turn cumbersome? Correct. So if the speed was lower, then you, the, the U-turn would be fine? like it would be easier, it wouldn't be as much of an issue? 
Well, if uh, if the traffic comes at 30 miles an hour, we have a side distance. We can make uh, we can judge that there is no traffic, and we can make a safe U-turn. That's correct. I think what he's saying, if I'm hearing him correctly, and, uh, uh, that he, he wants the uh, sign further up in the S-curve to, to slow the traffic down through that entire stretch uh, to, to lessen the uh, impact. Correct. Because right now, um, right now that that U-turn, which is legal, and, and the ones that are no longer legal, they're all, uh, they're all imperiled by the high speeds. Correct. Right. And then in fact, yes, now that uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Trustee uh, uh, Young mentions it. There is a 30 miles an hour sign that we can barely make uh, above that uh, the dark SUV going southbound. Uh, if there could be another sign on that electric uh, 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 at the height of that uh, uh, utility pole where those uh, uh, clipping grass clipping bags are, maybe it might intimidate intimate uh, drivers to. Uh, to respect the speed. Um, I think we get this is a it's a little bit co complex understanding, but I think we're on the same page now. Yeah. I think the recommendation would be to move or reposition the speed sign and perhaps ask police department. I know Mamaronic Avenue speed issues are brought up. It seems like every meeting. Yeah. Can, and I'm sure the police department has it top of mind. Like yeah. it seems like I mean, there, there is a speed limit sign. Uh, up here uh, north of the uh, entrance to 95, which I believe uh, is in, within the village. So there's a sign there. This is, the, this is the, in Harrison, I believe. Um, the Porter Bridge, right? Crossing over the bridge, you go into Mamaronek. I, I can check, I'm not, I'm not, not uh, entirely uh, uh, familiar with or yeah. if it's on one side or the other or midway, it's some of these uh, borders are a little strange. <laughs> so, so three things, let's check if there's signage there. If there's not signage, it seems straightforward. We should have a speed limit sign there. We can well, reposition I, the speed uh, sign. And I, I still think we should ask the police department if possible for enforcement because cars fly on the Marinic Avenue. Um, but what do you guys think? Yes. Mr. Friedley? Yes, sir. You, you sent us a lengthy um, memo about Knollwood and the different- Yes, that's, it. that's another U-turn. Yeah. Right. So the, let's explain. There's three separate locations that we're talking about. We're talking about the whether to have a U-turn or no U-turn at Knollwood and the Marinac. The U-turn at Villa and the Marinac, the village has already decided no U-turn, right? And now we're talking about you're no. making a turn. No, so, no, the 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 Mamaronek and Villa has been entered into the code. That was at last uh, that was voted in last uh, uh, board of trustee. So a meeting. Can I, so just just to take a step back, uh, prior to the bridge construction, there was a reduced speed per curve when flashing. Um, I I'm guessing that was removed during the midst of the bridge project and will likely be reinstalled. I can confirm that yeah. uh, with Westchester County. So there will be some, the advisory signage will be returned about the, uh, the reduced speeds. And my recollection uh, from the board meeting was that the, it was the sense of the board of trustees is that that whole stretch needs to be dealt with in a, in a, uh, in a holistic fashion. In other words, um, you, you need to deal with the speed on that S, turn, uh, S curve. And then only once you've got that tackled, can you address the, uh, the individual U-turns? Uh, because it, as long as the speed is too, it, it is too fast, none of those U-turns you know, can be considered. Yes. And so, so, uh, so what, what, what I was hoping for, and what I thought I remember, and Dan, you can correct me, I, I, I remembered that uh, we were asking the commission to look at the whole, this whole stretch, this whole S-turn stretch and come up with a, um, with a, uh, uh, a suggestion for, for how to handle it because it's been a problem for a long time, it really has. Yeah, and, and you know, as I mentioned, I think uh, someone brought up, you know, now that the road is freshly paved, uh, it's uh, people are uh, uh, 
more confident in their ability to drive on the road. Yeah, yeah, it it, it invites, it almost invites a, a heavy foot. So. Yep. Um, yes. But um, at least, at the very least, I, I will um, confirm with the county uh, Department of Public Works and Transportation whether or not that uh, advisory signage and lighting will be uh, reinstalled uh, as part of as a, a punch list item for the uh, for this project. Um, uh, so I'll, I'll, I can uh, I'll follow up on that tomorrow. Dan, was a decision made about Knollwood? whether to allow a U-turn at Knollwood or to restrict it, what, what, where do we stand on that? So uh, at Knollwood, the U-turn is allowed. And it's, you know, the, what Mr. Friedley will, I assume, tell you that if we, if we didn't allow the U-turn at Knollwood, as a resident, he would have to drive all the way down into the village to be able to make a U-turn to go back north towards White Plains. Right. And that's why we got rid of it um, after it was uh, adopted, because it was a, a major imposition on uh, uh, residents, specifically on Sunset and um, uh, uh, the other road, which Mr. Friedley mentioned. Teresa. Teresa, yeah. Because they, they can only make a right turn onto the Maranick Avenue. If they have no, they would either have to, you know, traverse through a series of residential roads in Harbor Heights or go all the way down to the village to make a U-turn. In effect, so everybody who parks uh, in front of the apartment building. Yeah, so that, that, that's why it, it, even though uh, it was added back in 2014, uh, it was quickly uh, uh, rescinded based right. on those comments. Yes, and, uh, and the reason why I sent the letter is because uh, I was uh, walking around the, uh, the, the, the neighborhood on, a, on an evening constitutional, and I noticed two people uh, on the, uh, at the, uh, close to the intersection of um, Amarnak and Norwood pointing uh, around. And uh, then I saw the, uh, the, the minutes or the, the agenda on the, uh, the board of uh, 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 trustee somewhere that uh, Mr. Frioli had spoken to the uh, traffic commission and requested the reinstallation of that U-turn, uh, uh, no uh, no U-turn sign, which had been removed back in 2014 due to uh, heavy local population uh, 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 opposition. Yeah, so yeah, here's um, just to take you on a, a trip down Paranek Avenue. Uh, 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 this is. So that was uh, you just passed the no U turn at uh, at the okay. villa. This yeah, is so uh, uh, sun. This is sunset. sunset. Then this would be uh, Travers mm -hmm. or Beachwood. Uh, it, it, there was this uh, lighting truck. Is yeah. uh, it was that uh, uh, speed trailer right, instead of. Yeah. So if, if there is no U-turn allowed at this, uh, Keep at this intersection, uh, yes. they need to take the left and again, traverse through all these residential streets. Correct. Or they'd have to go. Up, up Norwood, past court, uh, yeah, a court. I, I think, it, you know, what you don't want to have is, you know, you, you want to encourage cars to be on the, uh, arterial roadways, not the residential streets. Correct. So that, that's why it was rescinded. Or, Correct. Uh, and I was, uh, I was just concerned uh, because of the fact that they came back on the agenda that I wanted to, uh, to voice my, uh, my opposition on, uh, to the, the reinstating of, the, of that uh, no u turn sign. Thank which, you. Is, which incidentally, incidentally is made from a protected uh, uh, turn lane with a, uh, a traffic light. In other words, uh, it is a relatively safe turn. Now, the left turn from- Mr. Friedley, you know, that, yes. with all respect, like we need, we have other items on the agenda. Oh, okay. and, all right, thank you. Where are we on this? 
So there's a couple of things that we need to do here. The, the board is asking the traffic commission to consider this whole area with the holistic approach of what we want to do to control speeding. It should be the traffic right. consultant. Oh, perhaps we work with the traffic consultant. I think I think we should talk about that, like what it should be. Like maybe we use their guidance. Maybe we make suggestions first. Too. Yes, I think the whole thing needs to be considered in, in, in total and not piecemeal. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, that's the that that that's the issue because you can you can play whack a mole with it. Right. Um, uh, uh, and it's not going to help. I mean, Lieutenant Gatta, what, what do you, what, what's your take on that? Uh, well, just looking for enforcement, you know, you, if you went out on a blitz and enforced heavy for a week, you'd have reduction for a week. And then once the police car moves on from somewhere else, then you yes. won't have that. So I think everything we do, if we have multiple layers to, to help with the problem, it's probably better than just strictly uh, working with enforcement and uh, yeah. warning devices. So just just, just a reminder, <clears throat> um, even though the, the village uh, is responsible for the enforcement, the the county owns the roadway. So we, we you know we can't put pavement markings or things in the ground without their permission. So I, I we can certainly uh, you know talk to our traffic engineers and something but uh, there would be, uh, we would need to, uh, you know, have the county as part of the discussion as well. Right. So, I mean, if the traffic commission can, can look at the whole, can, can deliberate about that whole area and then make a, make a recommendation to the board that we think, uh, we, we need a, uh, a traffic consultant study or, or, you know, um, whatever, whatever it is that you, you decide after, after looking at it. But I think, uh, uh, you know, you can't just deal with one. One yeah. U-turn at each intersection is just going to this is not going to work. It's going to be a comprehensive study. Yeah. Yeah. Traffic has increased and changed. I agree. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll keep this on the agenda. We'll work with Alina to have it as new business. And Mr. Friedman, we appreciate your perspective and your Thank you. long write in the description. Like we just think this is a bigger issue than what it may appear to the eye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Dan, do you mind promoting Tim? I think Tim was here before Christina. I think Tim is going to be talking about uh, four or five. Yeah. Okay, uh, I promoted the panelists. Hi, Tim. Um, are you with us? You can unmute yourself. Well, maybe he stepped away, but um, Tim, if, if you guys hadn't seen it, um, Tim's suggestion is for um, hang tags uh, on Madison Street between Old White Plains Road and Grand Street uh, for vehicles. He was at the last meeting um, with Laura's husband uh, talking about that same area and how trucks and other commercial vehicles are uh, taking a parking from, uh, from residents. And his suggestion is to start and create an ad hoc committee to, re to review the parking overall in that area um, and perhaps have it exclusive to just residents and remove the ability for commercial vehicles to park there. Uh, Laura, I think you probably have the most experience in that area. If there's anything that you want to add to Tim's suggestion. I would, I would, as we discussed and, and Dan was discussing it, we're coming up to, I guess, how you would call it renewal, Dan, of the yeah, residential park and review. Yeah, they, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. That's okay. I think that Washingtonville and the area around Washingtonville needs to be rethought and residential parking does need to be increased time-wise, um, location, you know, you'd be able to probably have maintain a little better control of your parking situation in that area. Plus, you know, being a flood zone, it would help in accountability and structure and giving residents what they need the valuable parking, not just at certain parts of the day, but when they come home from work, when they come home on the weekend, 
you know, but I think from 2013, when this began, inception 2015, we're here at 20, you know, we're in the 22s here. Um, parking has changed throughout the village. And I think it's something we have to think about in a bigger aspect so we can control it in a less complex way, pulling revenue in and doing, doing our due diligence to ensure residents and homeowners and tenants are finding the parking that they need. No, it's not gonna be perfect. No, everybody isn't gonna be able to park, but right now we're over parked. And we have, when it rolled out in the first phase, it was, it has not been enforced, which is something that's needed. So perhaps we would have to consider hiring out like LAX, like Nourishell does or White Plains. And, you know, possibly in the budget line, you have this 24 hour um, residential policing, which would include us to gain revenue and to maintain quality of life and to maintain parking. Maybe it's things that we need to look into as an ad hoc committee to help in in that renewal of residential parking and getting everybody's input because it's just not happening in one area anymore. It's pretty much across the board, you know, and I think that that's what Tim O'Connor is trying to, you know, probably get across. You know, if you kind of focus down on the one area that he's talking about, you could spread that out in a magnifying glass. You have Oway Plains Road, portion of Madison Street, portion of New Street, you have Gertrude Forgotten, you have a part of Plaza Forgotten, so, you know, it's like water in a jar trying to find its way around instead of making it, you know, complete whole, everybody having residential parking and then doing similar to what we discussed in, in, in Larchmont, you know, 1230 to 430 at night, you know, if you don't have a residential parking tag or a special permit, you know, this lax company comes in and tickets you heavy in your pocket. Our, our village makes revenue and our residents have parking. I mean, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. So there, there are two components to the residential parking program. The first component is the ability to actually have a residential parking program. And that's what the state legislation does. The state legislation says the village of Mamaroneck may establish a residential parking system and it identifies the specific streets on which it can be done. Uh, and one of the things that they put in the legislation, uh, this is what they do with all the newer um, uh, legislation they've adopted, uh, is that there has to be a minimum of 20% set aside for non-residents. What they mean by non-residents are uh, people who don't live in, the, in those aforementioned streets, not necessarily non-residents in uh, of the village. Uh, that's the first part is the special legislation. The second part is really the specifics of the, you know, the who, what, why, when, where, how, who's eligible, uh, what's the time frame, when is it allowed, uh, you know, what's the charge. That's uh, look up to, look left up to the uh, the local uh, legislative body. So Thanks, Dana. We were just looking at person at the actual locations and it includes Grand Madison, Washington Street, Waverly. So that whole section of Washington built, there's yeah. about 10 different streets. Yeah, I mean, the um, when when we first set it up, we set it up uh, at kind of using the train station as the as the center point. Uh, and it was encompassed uh, most of Washingtonville and uh, several streets in Rhineck, which I, I think in Rhineck it includes uh, Melbourne, Union, uh, Beach. Beach. Uh, I'm not sure about, I can't recall if all of Beach is involved or I, uh, portion, uh, but uh, you know, my, uh, my experience shows that uh, a half mile is pretty much the, um, the limit uh, after which people will not try to park for free and walk to a train station. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the, uh, the impetus behind we set, how we set up. Now, you know, Washingtonville developed at a time when 
you know, the train, I mean, it developed because of the trains. I mean, it was, it was among the first suburbs in the country. Um, and that's why it, it got built up and then, you know, became, you know, multifamily housing, uh, you know, the streets which were built to accommodate horse and buggy, um, you know, were not meant, were, were designed before, you know, 40, 60 years before cars were even commonplace in the village of Mamarinek. No, I, I agree. I think I, I appreciate Tim's suggestion for, especially if we have to act soon, um, as it's still, uh, I think it's 2025 it expires or January 1st, 2025. So yeah. perhaps I mean, the, not going. I'll, I'll reach out to Assemblyman Otis's office. Um, it's a special, special legislation is, uh, uh, it's, it takes a while, uh, a little less so when you're just renewing, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll get the conversation started with uh, some of the notices office, see what the time frame is for them to uh, uh, introduce the uh, renewal legislation. Okay, thanks, Dan. Everyone good with that? I don't think we have to vote, like we at least have to get the ball rolling on. You know, Dan's gonna reach out to the, uh, the, the representative to, to get the ball rolling to see what's needed to actually enact the changes. I, you know, I'd like to see that more sooner or later because it takes a lot of time to collect information, data, you know, residential needs, you know, to take some surveys and to see what we can do to make real comprehensive changes and to accommodate, to roll this out the second time in a more controlled fashion. And, and uh, Washingtonville has a kind of an elevated status because of the flood. I mean, people know where it is, right. you know, so. You know, and we need to, we need to monitor that, monitor how many passes are out, if they're expired, you know, how many, we, we need to do a mathematical equation of how many passes per house and how many spots there are per area, you know, so you're not over issuing parking passes and causing overflow. You know, people renting an apartment or buying a home, needs to be aware of what they're purchasing. It's almost like a homeowners association. You know what you can do, what you can't do, or what you're able to do, or where you're able to park, you know, so that's pretty clear and concise. And so it gives us time to gather that information, make packets, you know, get data, suggestions. I think you need an overflow because if you assign, I'm not sure what you're saying, are you saying that you assign the number of permits that match the number of parking spaces? No, no, that's not what I said at all. What I said is you're gonna have an overflow, but you can't have such an overflow that you're issuing parking passes that can't accommodate. If you have 158 spots and you, you, you overshoot that babe, maybe 20, that's one thing. But if you have a house that has 14 vehicles and you have a street that is a non-conform street, and you issue 100 parking passes for that street, but there's only 158 spots within that one area, then it's for not. So who's responsible for determining how many permits get issued? Well, that's what I'm coming to the table saying now that, that we need to, the first time around, it was issued haphazardly. You have to say you own, a, you have a two family house and these are examples of so fake numbers. Let me finish. That if, yeah. that if you review it, how many permits are That's exactly issued. what I'm saying. That's why you want an ad hoc committee. You want to say, here's the application. Do you own a two family home, for instance, a four family, a six family? If you have a 20 family home, you could only have this amount because the total number has to stay within that level playing field. So if you're a two family home, you issue four passes. If you're a six family home, you could have up to five, no more than that, because then there's gonna be overflow, but you're controlling your overflow. Well, why don't you, why don't you let uh, uh, Dan uh, confer with, uh, with uh, Otis and uh, see what it's gonna to take to extend mm -hmm. it. And then you can, before you, you know, before you get in the weeds, you might as well no, uh, I was see just if it's possible. Give me an answer. Oh yeah. <laughs> We, we love Laura for her passion. <laughs> well, no, it's, you know, because we we're, we were here on the inception of it and we're still feeling it, mm -hmm. you know, even with it here, you know, and really the bottom line is you could create the best plan in the world, but unless you have enforcement, whether it's our 
our PD or you hire a private company to circulate throughout the village and handle this situation like White Plains, Nourishell, you know, other municipalities are doing. Nothing. It's, it's, you know, it's just numbers and games and permits and, you know, and everybody in the same spot coming to the traffic committee complaining. No, I, 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 I agree. Now, Dan, can you promote um, Christina? I'm not sure. Does Tim need to speak? Yeah, Tim just needs to unmute himself. Yeah, I'm here. Thanks, okay. man. Right. Yeah. Tim, and apologies, but um, if you can just be brief, we really appreciate it. Well, well um, you know, I just, the last meeting and this meeting, I forwarded some pictures about the uh, the Madison Avenue uh, situation with the parking where it's not zoned. And so what, what I like to do is provide some factual information on whatever I send in. So it's just not, you know, wasting your time. There's some fact behind it. So, you know, the pictures that's picked itself, this trucks, you know, parked around Madison Street daily, taking up spots. They're there all day, commercial plates, out of state plates, taking up residential spots. This is the last thing I said at the last meeting. And so that's the, the premise of the email that I sent out today. Uh, you know, it's got to be fixed. We got to pull that into the fold. We have to align that section of Manager Street between Old White Plains Road and Graham with the rest of the village. And so that would actually open up spots if we make that a zone spot for residents and the taxpayers of that area. Um, on top of that, I appreciate you with the conversation. I got the back end of it with the ad hoc committee looking into the Old White Plains Road. That was just a thought I had out of the box something to share with you guys, you know, just something that I had a thought at the moment. Um, so maybe that could go forward. I'll, I'll leave it up to this committee to figure that one out. Um, you know, if you need a, a member, I'll be more than happy to jump on that one as well. But uh, yeah, so it's just basically right now, the Madison Street between a White Plains Road and Grand Street, we need to pull that into the fold really. I appreciate that, Tim. And I didn't mean to be curt, it was just a, uh... I think we agreed with your sentiment and it's something that we're going to action on. So. All right, uh, great. Thank, well, I, I appreciate your time though. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tim. All right, now we have uh, Christina. Yeah, uh, she can, uh, uh, let me. Okay, Christina has left the building. Momentarily. I didn't see her name aligned to anything, so. But she can always come back. And maybe it's already something that we're going to talk about. All right, moving on to uh, business that uh, we didn't have an attendee to speak to, starting with the Jefferson Avenue. Um, and this was the issue. And Dan, thanks a lot for your comments in advance, where um, we're still getting resident feedback with respect to. Um, you know, the, the stop signs not being the greatest idea, like first and foremost for the uh, fire department, having to be able to quickly get into and out of that uh, area. Um, you know, a couple of suggestions that you had, like with the, the, the speed limit, the enforcement always seems to come up, uh, children at play signs, the speed humps. Um, but, you know, that not, not being a great idea, given just like the fire department. I personally, I like the idea of like the increase like in the high visibility signage. This thing coming down North Barry, like you could take for granted, may not be able to necessarily see that there's a playground right there, not justifying folks high speeding there, but I think increased signage leading up to that area as well. I think that could help, but be curious for other folks' take on how to just improve the speed situation in that area. Yeah, and, and if you saw my commentary just as a, uh, uh, because you know, you have, we have Columbia Firehouse over there. Uh, the North Berry Avenue bridge is over the tracks is uh, weight restricted. So fire engines are not supposed to go over that. So they have to go down Jefferson Avenue uh, in the event of an emergency response uh, for most uh, calls that they have to get to the uh, south side of the tracks. Uh, uh, you know, there was, uh, there is a playground there. Uh, that is an appropriate use of a children at play sign. 
those are supposed to be used in uh, areas where you would not expect to uh, encounter a large congregation of children, uh, except at a, you know, a playground or a school. Um, you know, when, when you're in a residential neighborhood, uh, you know, children are generally expected to be around playing in their front yards, uh, not in the street, but uh, definitely in their front yards. Uh, and this is, you know, the, the question about the speed. Um, I, I uh, had forwarded the information about the uh, traffic uh, analysis that we did on Hillside Avenue, which, you know, slightly different in scope to what Jefferson is, but roughly the same width roads, same type of uh, character in that it's uh, residential on both sides of the road. Uh, people were using Hillside to avoid uh, Northbury Avenue because you can get to uh, uh, across the river and to Maranek Avenue at Nostrand from there. So um, you know, we did uh, uh, look at the speeds and out of 8,200 separate events that attract, I think they were uh, the 85th percentile was so like 28 miles an hour. So it was under the speed limit. Uh, and there were two cars that were out of 8,200 that uh, were over 50 miles an hour. So, um, so those are my comments on, on you know, what, what you know, looking at uh, Jefferson Avenue. Anyone have any thoughts like on that area? I took a look at Jefferson Avenue. So going from the train station up the hill to North Ferry, there are no, um, I didn't see any speed limit signs. So I feel like we've done a, I know it's not much of a speed zone, but we've done a couple of speed limit signs. I don't see why we put it at Jefferson Avenue and at the park. I thought we put it in the middle of the block to slow people up. Well, a children at play sign, again, it's supposed to be uh, in the vicinity of, of parks and playgrounds where you would, that's where children play. No, I meant a speed limit sign. I don't know if there is one. Oh, speed limit sign. Oh, yeah, uh, speed limit sign. I don't think there is one that whole. Oh, yeah. I, I just said at the beginning, you know, I think you'd probably want to have it at the beginning of the street so that when people are making a turn going onto it, they would see it. Okay. Yeah. I, um, At least it was a long stretch without a sign. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I am not really, uh, I'm not tied down to a specific location other than it's, you know, visible to motorists so they know what the speed limit is. You know, typically you put it at the beginning of the street when they get onto it, but, you know, you can, uh, the, the two main, uh, the three main entrances to that section of Jefferson Avenue are going to be uh, by the, uh, the Jefferson Avenue extension, which is the train station, um, Hillside Avenue, uh, by uh, uh, the railroad, uh, with the railroad bridge going over Jefferson Avenue, uh, Hillside Avenue, and um, the, uh, uh, the playground. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's not, it, you know, it's not, it doesn't require any sort of board action. So, you know, if there's uh, a request to look at adding an additional sign, that's something that we can, uh, you know, do with Public Works. I don't think it would hurt. Can you build the street or by the corner? On the corner. Middle of the street, different story with the fire trucks and the whole reason that we can't do anything more. Seems like low hanging fruit just to also show some movement with the residents too, you know? Because like immediately after the minutes came out, like they reached back out <laughs> immediately. So like the people that are paying attention could be a start. We could see if it has any effect. I could put it up for vote, you know, if you want to make a motion to um, install, we could determine which signs they would be. Dan, maybe we would need to <laughs> consult up with that. Like, should it be children at play, like the types of signs, or do we have to be specific on that? Well, I mean, if, if, if um, I, I don't necessarily know that, if, if, let me take a step back. Um, if a children at play sign 
is to be installed, it, it, it's an appropriate installation near a playground. Right. Uh, if it's, you know, a speed limit sign, um, you know, that's, uh, I, I, I can see if there's any sort of preferred location from a traffic engineering point of view. I, mean, I, I you know, un unfortunately, I think, um, um, you know, most people, I, I, I don't know what effect putting a speed limit sign would have because, you know, you have, you know your speed limit signs all over the village, you know, people speed. Um, I, I, I think it's, it might kind of be bordering on white noise, uh, but, uh, you know, if that's a, we can, we can certainly look at that. I can uh, talk to our traffic engineer, see if there's any general generic guidance on uh, placement of them. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if we have a better course of action yet. If, if you want, like I said, I'll, I'll reach out to our traffic engineer for uh, some, uh, some advice on uh, speed limit signs. Okay. Thanks, Dan. The next item, so we discussed the, the hang tags just before with Tim. Um, the old White Plains in Madison Street, the removal of parking. Laura, did you want to comment on on this I, you updated that and we removed it because it moved to the board. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 412 North Barry, the um, the resident actually asked us to wait till September to address it if they wanted to speak. So works for us. 745 River, we went over uh, the, the actually, sorry, I forgot one other one. The uh, Center Avenue sidewalks and parking. I'm not sure if you guys saw the the email, but it was pretty straight to the point. Basically, the resident was saying that during time, like there's cars, it's a somewhat industrial street. There's cars and trucks. And I even looked at it on Google Maps. I think you can see the trucks basically on the sidewalk uh, in front of the house. Dan's commentary was that, you know, this is an enforcement issue. I agree with Dan. It seems pretty straight to the point. Maybe we can ask Lieutenant Gatter, like if the police department can go there one a, a couple times just to see what the uh what the lay of the land is and if trucks are actually parking on the sidewalk it, it's uh per the state bnt it's illegal to park on a sidewalk whether it's a public sidewalk or a private sidewalk so. on center it's it's a commercial street there it's not now here if you look here sidewalks. There's sidewalk here. This must be their house. There is no fourth in the mind. Can we uh, can we look at that? Yeah, Dan, you mind bringing it up? It's so funny. In the Google map, there's literally a it's Center Ave in the industrial area or Center Ave in Washington, though. Uh, Center Ave, I think down in the industrial area. Yeah. Okay. Yes, industrial area. Well, it's an industrial area, but it's it's residential, and those yeah. houses are are have been there for a very long, and those houses have been there for a very long duration of time. No, I I just didn't know which side of the river it was on, so yeah. I just wanted to get that straight. So I put it put, pulling up the, uh, the right. Yeah, it's, it's west of the Sheldrake. Okay, uh, let me. Uh -huh. So we have sidewalks. Sidewalk. See that? <laughs> There's the truck. It's technically on the right hand side. Those are homes. Right. Yeah. No, I think there's still about uh, uh, a dozen, a half, dozen and a half, or two dozen homes in the industrial area. And they're dense. Yeah. You know, and they're looking for the same structure. Although they live in the industrial part of, of the area, 
they're they're they want to be able to pull in their driveway they want to be able to park and they want to be able to walk down their side of this their right. sidewalk without it impeding and that's pretty much the way it's happening through washingtonville you know people are parking on sidewalks you know parking in their driveways where the tail of their car are hanging into the path of the sidewalk pushing people to walk into the street you know it's, it's something to probably think about how they could coexist there and run their business and, and live at the same time. You know, there's gotta be some sort of give and take or enforcement. Yeah, I think I, I may have discussed with the chief or someone about, uh, you know, we used to have that issue with uh, the uh, Formula One driving school on Waverly. Right. Yeah. That was like an endemic issue with them for decades. But they've they've rectified that behavior. Yeah, behavior modification. They also changed the name, thank God, because it's oh. a terrible uh, for a driving school. <laughs> for for a, a, a driving a you know the five hour course school, which is you know supposed to be like teaching how to drive, be defensive driver. What about a what about a door to door um, uh, a visit to the businesses, telling them that. Uh, uh, you listen, people live here. You got to keep the sidewalks open. Uh, at some point, somebody's going to come by and start writing tickets. You know, fair warning. What do you think? Any, any volunteers from the traffic commission? <laughs> um, Laura was raising her hand. You want to go? Laura, if you do it, I would join you. I don't mind. You know, it's, I just think it's got to uh, be a board, but you want to go? I'll go with you. I, I got, you know. Right. No problem telling somebody, you know, be fair to everybody else. Yes. <laughs> but I think that they need to be included in conversations to the, yeah. the business owners in the industrial area. They are out of the loop in a lot of things as well. And they're living it basically in their own bubble sure. and disconnected to a point, you know, they're in and they're out and nobody, you know, without enforcement of some sort, they, they, they have no barriers. Like you, you look at this picture here, uh, Dan. I mean, you see, uh, uh, you know, you see the car cars right that are parked normally, then cars that are parked on the sidewalk between the building. And, you know, and I understand it's probably limited parking, but uh, you, you know, at some point maybe they should just be informed. Uh, you know, I know you've been doing it, but you know, let's stop this because it's going to start costing you money at some point. And especially that we're a flood zone. I mean, we're coming yeah. up on three-year anniversary of the most catastrophic event that I can remember in my lifetime. Yeah. And we're going back to old habits that caused us hundreds of thousands of dollars in loss. And we should have systems in place to, to prevent that and to prevent it, safety. If we had a flash flood and these cars are packed in like that, we're in a situation. Well, I mean, I, I think you could, you know, it's up to you guys to uh, decide what you want to do. But I, that was just my fault. I like the idea, to be honest with you. And I think we, we can relay that to Lieutenant Gatta, Chief, the police department after we speak with them. Lieutenant, would that be appropriate? Yeah, I mean, the enforcement issue is just a matter of getting police officers and parking enforcement there. Yeah, I mean, uh, but uh, I, I mean, to for uh for us you know i guess these are you know the traffic commissioners would, would it be appropriate for them to just advise people that uh you know they, they can't do this or is that something that the police department should handle i think you might get more uh voluntary cooperation if you know citizen to citizen resident to business owner okay um i think a lot of times there's a implied threat when a police uh, of, of getting picketed when a police officer knocks on the door versus hey we want to work with you and be more collaborative um, that's just my own opinion um, let's do it we'll coordinate we'll stop there it's not you don't have to be you know we could be the cooperative about it like hey like understand their plight and what we can do do you think you could give a you would could give us like um a script to follow so we wouldn't <clears throat> Climb out of our lane. <laughs> Maybe bodyguards. Oh, I mean, just most of the sentiments that you, that you guys have been saying are, are pretty much on the on on board. It's you know the safety issue. You know, we 
all want to uh, uh, provide enough parking for the people that live here as, and as well as the businesses, then, you know, there's obviously the environmental factor um, that living in a floodplain. I don't think there's really much more <laughs> needs to be said or anything specific. Yeah, Laura, we'll work on it. We'll, okay. we'll be we'll be friendly about it. Let's go on. I was going to say in the future, we'll keep thinking about Laura's idea of relaxing, hiring a private contractor to give out to this. I mean, that's, I think, it seems like the police department. Yeah, I, I don't think you can. Have the, I think there are very specific rules about who's allowed to you know, enforce public law in, in New York State. I think you have to be a sworn officer. I, again, it's, I'm, it's not something I've looked into, but I, I, uh, I know that they're very specific, very specific about who can actually issue uh, uh, tickets and um, who has enforcement authorities. To help alleviate, you know, the, the burden on, on our police department and to collect revenue, is that something you could put like on fast forward to investigate, you know, or find out how other municipalities are, are doing that and, you know, forge friendships with White Plains or Nershell or Tuckahoe. And so well, I, I, I think you, you mentioned Laz. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, I know um, uh, Laz started out originally in Hartford, Connecticut. Um, and uh, I think what they do is they, they manage parking facilities yeah uh, usually what happens is uh, uh, the the rules and regulations are enforced by the local police department or parking enforcement officers but they've made some sort of arrangement with, with LAS to help manage the citation management process yeah and, and LAS has no, no authority outside of the um, the, pub, uh, uh, the private uh, lots that they um, that they manage for instance yeah. they manage the MTA lots. You can yeah, get a ticket. So I, don't, I don't think they're in, they're actually issuing tickets. I think they're helping to manage the citation process. I can assure you they're issuing tickets. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I like I, I have I, friends that are like you know paying them. Yeah, you know, I, I I worked with <laughs> I worked with Laz uh, maybe fifteen years ago, where they helped manage a. Uh, Ballet operation that we were running at a surface lot in a community I used to work in. Well, anything to help the police department so they're not burdened with this, and you know our our meter people aren't out and overburdened because there's a lot of territory for them to cover and a lot of revenue we're losing. Yeah, you're you're right, Laura. We'll, we'll uh, I always like it. at least like my perspective is I'd rather not be out like hammering the resident, like I think we could take steps before, like we, you know, start issuing tickets and stuff like that. Cause I think ultimately that'll go down a bad path. Like it may solve problems and we'll get the revenue from it, but I'd rather give them the opportunity to forum, like right. even for them to come to the traffic commission, you know, and voice like, hey, this is why we're doing it and come to a solution. Like, I, I don't think you're wrong, um, but let's start, we'll talk to them and, you know, Hopefully, they don't rip our heads off or anything. But I don't think they. Oh, they're gonna go to pain. I get you. <laughs> sure, they're there. I mean, it means just avoid the properties that have the "beware of dog" signs. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's go to the um, the royal place. So, Dan, like your comment there, like if, if you don't mind bringing it up on the uh, Google Maps. And you know, your thoughts were consistent with what the. Um, what we've typically said about stop signs about how they don't slow down traffic, people speed right up, et cetera. Um, one idea that I had there was when you're on actual Royal Place and you can see it on the Google map, the foliage or landscaping actually juts out and may be against code. You can't see the cars coming from Old Post Road. Can I comment on that? Yeah, go for it. In 2021, that specific issue came up with someone up again recalls it, not, not there. Um, you have to go to the corner of Royal and Old Post Road. There you go. So the corner of Royal and Old Post Road, there's a heavy bush 
And two years ago, it was blocking. I think that's it. But it's much, it's much worse. Um, I'm not sure which that direction. Yeah. So here's 2013. 26. So, so that bushy area has now overgrown where it makes it difficult to for somebody driving down Old Post Road who wants to make a right turn on Royal, for example. The, the visibility is obstructed. And that person, the homeowner, was instructed to uh, remove some of the bushes so that visibility was restored. That bush has now continued to over grow and visibility is, is a serious problem. Okay. Maybe I can, we I can need to remind them to do some. Yeah, I can, I can refer that to the building department. So the question is, they were asking for a stop sign on old, uh, old, post, old, old post road. Um, I don't know whether that's necessary we can do that. I mean, it's, They're it's a one way street. One way street. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't know. I, I would I would suspect that if Lieutenant Gatta to run the traffic data, if there was a, a high number of crashes, I would be very very shocked. Uh, I'm not I'm asking to do that, but uh, yeah, I, right six, it looks like well, I'd have to look. At the intersections, but uh, maybe nine thirty one. No, we're only talking about maybe two. Yeah, but like I like like you said, Robert. I think the visual obstruction is the biggest issue. Uh, you know, I think you know a stop sign would be like trying to kill a fly with a sledgehammer in this situation. No, I agree. All right, thanks, Dan. Yep. I think that's, and especially if it's already come up and like, you know, bushes and trees grow. So it's just quite possible that it's gotten out of, uh, out of code again. Yeah. Well, I said, I, I, I've shown everyone that picture of uh, uh, Beach and Tompkins in the past where we had that one property clear up their, their hedges and it was, a, you, you can see a major improvement from the uh, history of the street view. Cool. Let's move on to the uh, the Bleecker Avenue. The Bleecker Avenue, the resident who's not on, who's the zero, but um, he wrote a pretty lengthy email with respect to um, his ask on speed humps being added to Bleecker. Um, you know, he mentioned his wife and dog walk on Bleecker regularly, heading down to the Orient, the bike path, and has come across multiple instances where speeding cars have passed by them. Other residents in the area um, have also witnessed the same problem. Um, blah, blah, blah. Said he heard about a dog being hit in the last few years in that same area, um, and essentially asking for speed humps uh, there. Dan, do you mind just bringing that up? Um, Leaker Avenue. Uh, so this is Bleeker by uh, Rush, Rushmore. Yeah, Rushmore. So down here is the sound. Uh, was this specific, was this a specific location on Bleeker? I think this whole stretch from um, from Oriente. Rushmore to uh, Orienta. It's a okay. long stretch of road on Bleeker. Oh, the, the adjacent to the club, basically. And no yeah. stop signs, there's no parking there. It's just open stretch. Dan, what is the criteria for the installation of the speed humps? Like what qualifications are needed? Do we have any speed humps? Uh, I don't think there are any your real qualifications other than, um, you know, they, they shouldn't be on arterial road, arterial roadways or collector roadways, um, roads that are meant to carry, you know, traffic from the residential streets to the, uh, 
the main uh, roads. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything aside from that really, but you know, we, I know we were looking at a pilot program. We hadn't considered leaker. Um, I mean, it's, it's all, you know, it's, I, I would hazard a guess that 98% of the traffic from my non-scientific uh, perspective uh, is going to be people who live in Orienta driving on bleaker. Yeah. The, you know, what's interesting is like, um, as I was like reading off from the email, that whole stretch of bleaker, the, like there's no sidewalks that part of the Marinick there. There's also not one sign on bleaker warning about uh, speed or anything. Like I went quickly down it. There's not one sign on either side of the street. Maybe we should start with crazy. Signage. Start with signage. Yeah. Uh, wow. I think people know what the speed limit is. Dan, are you trying to bring it up on the screen? Um, well, I, I, I did have it up on the screen. I, I, I can quickly bring it back up. Um, I think uh, the verbal description that uh, uh, Brian and uh, Laura gave is pretty accurate. It's it's a it's a stretch of roadway that you know, th and this is this is the opposite problem of Washingtonville in that everyone has you know, there's single family homes, everyone has driveways. Uh, for the most part, you know, they're parking their driveways. Plus, one of the other largest prop, uh, property owners is the day school and you know they're not they don't have people parking on the uh, you know so they're, they're they're not encouraging you know street parking there it's not tracking street parking I, mean, I think we should even if they're advisor I think on that stretch like if it's a straight shot to the water off of a main road, there should be signs reminding folks of the speed as well as it, it would make sense that it's used as a, a roadway as well for walkers, even without the um, sidewalk, just to get to the water. There it is, that's a stretch. That's, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. If you go all the way down to the water, there's nothing on either side. And I can see people just having to like walk on the side there. And if you go down, you know, there's so much what the gentleman side. brought up. People put rocks on the side with like the little piece of grass that like sticks out there. So it's obviously people are trying to improvise or do what they can. They're discovering places. Right? Yeah. yeah. What about like rumble, those rumble strips to help out? You know, they don't, you're not seeing them really. You're feeling them. Maybe, maybe test them out in one or two spots and see if it helps them out a little bit. Is this in response to a complaint? Yeah. Yes. No. Well, maybe put one of the speed, you know, maybe rotate that around as, as we get complaints. If, if, if the police department allows, you know, to, to help start solving the issue. Well, I, I, I think over the next several months and Lieutenant can correct me if I'm wrong, they're probably gonna be focused with those speed trailers in the vicinity of the schools. I see him nodding in agreement. Yeah, just, just so you know, starting August 14th to the 21st is Speed Awareness Week. And then once we get to September, we're gonna be focusing on uh, back to school. And that's uh, part of our uh, police traffic services grant. Uh, monies that were given by uh, Governor's Traffic Safety Committee for enforcement during those times. What do you guys think about the signage? I think we need some. I think we're going to put speed humps in. Maybe we should put the street should be part of the building. We need a separate conversation about speed bumps, whether whether the village is interested in implementing it anyway. Like, I don't know that we put speed bumps anywhere in the village. Dan, are there speed bumps or speed humps anywhere in the village? Not at this time. Uh, my, my recollection, Dan, was that there was going to be a pilot project. Yeah, we were looking at it, but yeah, I think other projects diverted our attention. 
I, I can talk to Jerry when he uh, gets okay. back later this week. We talked about speed bumps at uh, Millwood going up the uh, walk on Marinick Avenue, that incline that was hazardous for kids playing, right. among other places. When we restoke the the speed hump or speed bump pilot program, then you know there's probably a lot that's going to like the you know the qualifications immediately come to mind, right? right? Like, what are you going to prioritize? Like, what does an area does need a certain amount of traffic? Like all those types of questions. I think in the immediate short term, especially with Dan saying like with the visibility signs, there isn't much that's needed. And like, even aside from his complaints, like there's nothing there on this road. Yeah, the only, the only you know, regulatory signs I see are just the, uh, you know, you have the stop sign at Rushmore and uh, uh, Bleecker. Uh, Is there any way you have, you have, you have uh, several very large properties on the south side of the roadway, which just don't generate any on street parking and you know the homes on the north side for the most part. Yeah, as you can see, you know, there's a garage that driveway is going to fit two to three vehicles. Uh, you know, this driveway could fit four vehicles. Actually, in theory, probably six vehicles. Um, we won't mention Walton. Yeah, I mean, this is. Well, Dad, if you could get the, um, at least just see what the pilot program, like if it can be reprioritized, I think overall it's something that we need. You know, as, as, as a general comment, you know, what you see here is a bit of an issue also in that uh, your know, pedestrians are supposed to walk against traffic, not with traffic. Um, I mean, that's, not that that's the most important thing, but that's uh, it's important because when you're walking with traffic, you don't see the cars behind you when you're walking against it. Both you and the motorists see exactly what's happening. Maybe it's something the resident too needs to have a conversation with a few of the. Yeah, I mean, they, they do have a pretty strong. Uh, and find out what they would like to see to help with the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The organization. The Orient has a very you know, active neighborhood association, uh, the or Orient Point Association. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, it may be you know, worthwhile to try and. Engage them on yeah you know, some of these uh, you know neighborhood education uh, issues. I like that idea better than because yeah. he was active over email and he said he would dial in, but he's on vacation today. So that's actually good, especially if they have already an yeah. HOA or a flavor of it. Like the streets a problem. But. Yeah, I mean, um, I I don't know who I know. Um, George Berger Deachin was was active. I don't know if he's still active in the uh, Oriana Point Association, but you know we can, I can, uh, you know, find information like that out pretty easily. Thanks, Dan. I can get back to the resident too and ask him what his involvement is. In okay. If there's anything ad hoc you can do. Yeah, let me. That covers the new business, and we're at yeah. ten after. We have number nine. We have number nine. Is that on there? No, I think number it was eight. I had his number nine. I had his number nine too. Like there might have been that might have been an earlier one. Corner of that's me. I entered that. That was the biggest. Oh, go for it. That was if you go to the notes, uh, it's another one of the corners in Washingtonville that are problematic. And if you go to the picture, you could see the corner of, and Dan, I don't know if you could bring it up on the screen, but I also have pictures in the email. It's the corner of Oway Plains Road and Mamaronic Avenue. And when you are making your right-hand turn off of Mamaronic Avenue, 
cars are parked corner to corner to go into the what was the old Peter and Sons Bakery. It's a bakery now, but I, it, it escapes me what the name is. And it is a crosswalk. And when you make that right-hand turn, you are forced at all times of the day to pull out into your into oncoming traffic to get around the vehicles that are parked. You have right double- Right over here. I'm sorry? Right over here. Oh, oh sorry, let me- <laughs> You have cars most of the time, as you heard us speak in the meetings prior to this, double parked on Oway Plains Road. You have tractor trailers in both lanes. Um, Jerry Barbera is aware of it. This is an ongoing issue. Brings you all the way to the corner of Madison and then the, the, it's problematic straight through to the corner of Grand Street. But this is the most problematic because it, it immediately pushes you making that right-hand turn yep. and coming directly into oncoming traffic. So I propose that we use from, and you could see there's plenty of signs that probably need to be reconstructed because you have 90 minute, 80 minute, you, you have signage on here that changes through what, the block. What does that sign say? Well, yeah. No parking here to corner. But see no. that no parking here to corner sign? The no parking here to corner sign from that sign outward, two or three cars actually park from that no parking here to corner past the corner where 640 is. So my my the best method right now and the safest method would be to actually paint grids and the what you have on Fenimore and Prospect, the white poles that are standing up, I would actually move that sign back probably to the middle of that van and I would stop any kind of stoppage on this corner because you have children crossing. This leads into Mr. Stark's conversation with MHS. You, it's it's there's crossing guard there at all costs. She can't cross her children. It's it's morning, noon, and night. I mean, and I can't best explain it, but rather than the pictures, you have you have to stop it as as soon as you can because somebody's going to get hurt. So, because when they're parked there, then they're double parking, and then you're driving around two cars, and then you have to see see where that white jeep is coming. At good at a good spot, you'll have a tractor trailer parked under that tree. And then you'll have to come around it. And then you'll have another tractor trailer at what was the old five is making deliveries. And then you can't make a right on Oway Plains Mode in, in Madison because cars are flanking the park and they're parked corner to corner. And then they're double parked to go into the bodega. So it's a maze. Yeah, it's terrible. So you really need to, even, just painting lines won't stop cars from being there. If you put those white poles up, you'll, you're going to stop cars from stopping there. And you're not going to hurt business because it's really a walking area. Okay. And to pull that that to pull that hazard from that corner would be a plus, especially that we're going into school. One of the signs, right there. Oh, there. yeah. Well, let, let me make a comment on the signs and thirty-minute parking. Well, the I'm at, I'm I, as, I just want to make one comment on the signs. As a general rule. You know, this would be a textbook example of sign pollution. Um, yes. You know, you, what the general is if you, you know, once you have more than two signs, so when, when you have three signs at one location, it's, it's visually confusing for people. And that's when they tend to. Uh, well, that know, agreed. Store. Because you see that 30 minute parking, you go 50 feet down the block. And it's 90 minute parking. No, and then 60, you go 60 minute parking. So and, well, the, and then you go down and there's a 90 minute, and then you go and it changed. It just and really the sign is for not because cars could be parked there for six and a half weeks and they don't move. So I, my I'm guessing the, the 30 minute was probably it's probably more related to the uh the bakery, the, the type of traffic it's bringing in, usually people going in and out. Um so that, that's probably why it's a shorter duration than what you have on the rest of the street. Right, but the issue is 30 minutes, 10 minutes or 15, you have gardening trucks, you have tractor trailers, you can't allow that situation to occur whatsoever. And you can't, you can't give them the opportunity to park like that on the corner because you have a stop sign, you have to make it, and then well, what, it's what forcing you. What stop sign are you talking about? Tell me what stop sign. Okay, so when you back up, if you've been in the area, 
if you back up and you're coming you off of the stop sign on the Maranica, yeah, right? when you're at that stop sign, right, and you have cars parked right up, uh, sticking out into okay, the right stop there. sign, no, exactly. back up right there. So when you're at that stop sign, yes, well, it's a stop sign. It's it's really the stop sign for the yeah, stay right there. The the this stay right there. Old White Plains Road. Are you saying cars park at the stop sign? You can have cars parked here, yes. Are you saying cars parked there? Yes, they do. I haven't seen any cars parked yes, there. Yes, they do. But the issue at hand, the issue at hand is the cars parked right. on Old White Plains Road to the corner when you're trying to make your stop at the stop sign. And then you have to proceed to make your right hand turn. Okay. I I'm sorry, I don't understand why you don't. I know that area when you make the turn past the stop sign. There's not a lot of space to turn like any oncoming traffic the other way. So that's the problem. And it, and in addition, see, I'll can't it, see when you turn. In addition, you'll have pedestrians trying to cross right, there as right. well. I saw one one near uh, near disaster just the other day. And that's one of the worst intersections. Yeah. Yeah. Can, can I give my impressions? Because I spent a lot of time at that corner over the last week. My first observation is that cars do not stop at the stop sign. What they do as they're approaching the stop sign, they're looking left. If they're right there, if there are cars coming up Mimernick Avenue that are in the left lane intending to, to make the left turn into Old Place, Old White Plains Road or into center, if cars are coming to make the left turn, then cars making the right right there, they'll either slow down or they'll stop. If there are no cars coming, indicating they're gonna make the left, cars just roll through the stop sign. And what happens is they're looking left and you can see exactly where that guy is in the, is in the crosswalk. That's exactly what happens. Cars are looking left. They're not paying attention to what's people in the crosswalk or other cars coming. That's what to me makes that a hazardous and dangerous location that needs some kind of reform or, or, or some signage or some way to make it a safer environment for pedestrians, for school kids, it's a hazardous. And again, the problem is cars do not stop. They're looking left, they're not looking right. How you fix that, I don't know. I think it's a job for the traffic engineer, maybe you can solve I mean, the traffic There's engineer. a lot of issues there. I mean, a lot of problems. I go, I go home that way all the time. It's, yeah. Yeah, the whole intersection is terrible. It's a, disaster. it's a disaster. And like I keep repeating, it's a comprehensive plan we have to go over. But the real issue at hand is when you're trying to make the right hand turn and you have cars flanking right here. Right. Making the right You'll have turn. See that see that crosswalk? At any given time during the height of the day, from 6 30 in the morning to, to maybe eight or nine o'clock at night or thereafter, you'll have three or four cars parked in the crosswalk all the way up to the no parking. See where those see where see where those lines are painted? What needs to be done now is the white cones need to be placed there so no one can stop there. What because about enforcement. Okay, so that would be great, but we don't have that. Why not? We can ask for it. There's no so without having, we're, we're not going to get enforcement there. That That's not going to happen. If there was enforcement to be had, I'm sure that, that they would have been there already. So I'm thinking if we can put those cones on, on Fenimore Road, we can put them in the most hazardous spot that we can see right now to prevent kids and adults and pedestrians and cars and vehicles from having to go into oncoming traffic. And coupled with your observations, Mr. Stark, it, you know, it, 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 it makes more sense. I mean, it's a quicker fix instead of us going around in circles and we're probably saving a life or two. Are those cones put up anywhere? Are those cones put, are they put anywhere else besides Fenimore Prospect? What are you talking about? The, the curb and, extensions we put in. You put the extensions in, but I'm just talking about their their affixed street white street cones, and I gave them to you in the pictures. If you just put the white street cones and line them up from the corner and follow that grid that that's painted, uh, and maybe plastic, expand the uh, plastic delineators. Yes. Yes. 
because if you allow cars to park there, where and and if you're gonna if you're gonna you leave cars to park there, but it's but it you, you, nobody stops cars from parking there. I mean, I I, I don't and know. And that's, that's why we're having this conversation. So to to well, no, I mean, I, I, I don't know that's the case that we're not we're not not enforcing there. That, that is a double negative. That's that's a hairy intersection, Dan. Yeah, I know it's, I understand that, but I'm just. Uh, I, I I don't want it to be, you know, uh, portrayed that we're not enforcing if there's a posted restriction. Yeah, you know, obviously we can't. can't I, I, honestly, in my heart of hearts, we probably need like a bigger conversation with a traffic consultant and engineer to really re-architect or come up with some sort of solution on how to deal with it. Because like, I'm sure if we pull the hundred people that go through here, they'd each have issues that they would call out. So yeah. what was the process that you utilized to okay those line markers on Fenimore as opposed to putting them here? Well, that was part of the the the, the project, the, the curb extensions. But that with that with the 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 reason we those... the re, the 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 main rationale behind what we did at Prospect and Fenimore was to narrow the width of the intersection or the crosswalk uh, to make it uh, safer uh, for pedestrians. Here, I don't know how much more you could really narrow the crosswalk because you have a lane of traffic over here and lane of traffic over here. Well, uh, we're not looking to narrow anything. If you paint the white grids down and you put those white, you know, cones that you have on Fenimore, blocking that grid so nobody could lay a car over it it might be a helpful fix but but um but i i but that there's there's an assumption that cars are parking where they're not supposed to be parking and i i uh, you know i don't know that that is a um a regular everyday thing it is if it, if it happens once I mean, and we, 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 we don't see it, we, we, we okay. only enforce what we what we see. I think we're hitting a point, we're not getting anything yeah. accomplished, to be honest yeah. with you. I think this intersection is gonna require either a separate meeting, separate conversation, work with a consultant. Yeah, and, and, and it's, little, it's also a little complicated by, again, this is the, the county portion of the roadway. So yeah. we can't do it, we can't touch the road. Yeah, oh no, I know. I just want to make sure that there's there's safety and, and it's and it's a hey, go on, Robert. Uh, so I have a general idea. It seems to me, um, I'm I have a folder for every issue location. I, I have over 50 folders, close to 50 or 60 folders, just last year and a half or so. It's too much, and there's no way to keep track of the issues, what was done, what needs to be done, who's gonna do what, when they're gonna do it. My suggestion is that we create some kind of spreadsheet that includes in one column, the different locations and the different issues, uh, who brought them up in another column, what's expected uh, to fix or resolve them. For example, the community development block grant that Dan has, um, allowed us to take advantage of is going to make, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but has a plan and program to fix a lot of the traffic and safety issues in the village. Am I correct about that? It's it's a program we use for a lot of sidewalks, correct. But, but, but the, it, there's a design of what specific things they plan to fix, correct? Correct. They, they get, Yes. In terms of streets, locations, what they're going to yeah, do, yeah. widen streets. Yeah, what we do is we, we apply for specific locations. Okay. Yeah. So my suggestion is part of this um, spreadsheet is that we drop in at those locations that, for example, a lot of them are cover the Memorandic Avenue school issues around Memorandic Avenue school, around the, along Washingtonville, along Memorandic Avenue. And unless we can identify specific locations, what, how it's going to be fixed, who's going to be fix it, then would that word that Lou likes to use, walk a mole. You know, we, we have no way of keeping track 
of these issues, how they're going to get resolved, who's going to do it, what the plan is. And as I mentioned, I read some of the old minutes going back years, and you'll see that all the things that we talk about now, we talked about years ago, the same problem. For example, Gertrude and Mamanik, who just got a, an, an issue about the stoplight is, isn't timed right, it's too slow, it doesn't allow. That was, that was covered four years ago, and it was supposed to be fine. So what I'm saying is we need, we need to have a better handle on these specific locations, what the plan is to fix it, how it's gonna be fixed, and identify those locations that we don't have a, a, a plan to fix. We need to include the school system. My idea is to work with the school administration, find out from them what locations, what issues they determine need to be addressed to provide safety for kids. Um, what things have already been done, uh, what thing, how they prioritize, what needs to be done first, what's more important. We, we, need, we need to attack this in a more uh, broad attack. So we understand the issues, we understand how we're gonna deal with them and, and that we have a record of that. Otherwise, each month going piecemeal, I'm sorry, I can't keep track of anything. I don't know how, any, how anybody else is able to keep track of all of these things. There, there are dozens and dozens of streets, locations, issues that we're told are, are safety issues, but there's no overall plan on how to address them and make sure that they're gonna get taken care of. Um, as far as the schools, I know that, um, uh, you know, we, I think uh, Brian, uh, is, you know, has meetings with the Safe Houston School Committee. Um, yeah, so I think th that's probably, uh, and the, the school administration is represented on the Safe Food School Committee along with the uh, PTAs. So I think that that's a, a strong connection that, you know, we're starting to build. <clears throat> as far as some of the, you know, the repetitive issues, uh, you know, and, and you see them a lot around schools. Um, and that I think that's a function of, when you have, uh, you know, you know, people who move to a community uh, and live there for, you know, ten or you know, fifteen to twenty years while there's there, they have children in the school system. Uh, what you know, over time, people you know, bring up issues that have been brought up in the past, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they weren't addressed. Um, it's just that. Um, they also aren't aware of what the history is. Um, for instance, you know, you talk about the um, uh, the, the timing on the signals on Mamaroneck Avenue, um, and you know that was a conversation that I had with um, you know people I met with uh, Ms. Good and uh, Tina Maresca uh, from from uh, uh, following up on the last meeting. You know, where, if if you look at Mamaroneck Avenue in total. When you make a change at one section of that intersection, it has a cascading impact on every other signal along the corridor. Um, so it's not just a it's not just as easy as oh give this intersection ten more seconds of green time because what that means is you're going to back up the traffic at every other intersection along that corridor for ten seconds. And if you give them 10 more seconds to make up for the time they lost, then you, it's, a, it's just gonna be a, 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 a bigger problem. Um, so it's, it's not that the, these issues aren't addressed, it's just that um, you, know, but you tend to have a lot of new people bring up ideas that were looked at by traffic commissions and staff five, 10, 15, 20 years ago. And you know, I've seen that for my entire career. Yeah, Robert's point, I, I think he, he's right in the sense that we have to figure out a way to track the status, yeah. update communication, like I could take that away. I mean, like at least at the starting point of the spreadsheet, yeah. just to see the, like, hey, this is what was done, this, and you could mark it off because it's too ad hoc. For your own organizational side. Yeah, no, I, I think that, yeah, that if, if it's a matter of just keeping track of the various um, uh, items, 
and the you know after action follow up that that's one thing but you know I I, I don't want to confuse the issue with things that uh, have never been looked at for uh, 20 years or people bringing up things that were brought up 20 years ago that were never nothing was ever done I mean it's it's not necessarily as as simple yeah, no, as that. You're, you're right Dan you're right yeah. let's uh let, let me clarify. I, I, I'm not trying to be critical of what, what I'm looking for yeah. is going forward. Yeah, As absolutely. With going forward, we, we know what's going to happen. We know what we need to do. Looking okay. forward. Right, I'm going to make, let's uh, let's wrap this up. Um, Can we uh, okay, okay the minutes before we go? Yeah, that's what I was going to do. I was going to vote on uh, the approval of the May minutes and the July minutes. So I'll make a motion to, uh, to approve the minutes. The vote on it. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I would like my edits considered for the July. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they'll be entered into that. Yeah, that's not how it works. Well, I, I think what you're saying is you want your suggested edits to automatically be added to the July minutes. Well, can we just no, include them not, both? I, I'm not sure. I would, what that means. I would like the committee to read the very descriptive email that I sent from the information I pulled from the video verbatim, and I would like it added into Mr. Stark's notes. Just call me so Robert, not could, Mr. Stark. It could, I'm, I'm just being respectful. That's how mm -hmm. I am. I work in a school district and that's what I do all day long. Everybody is Mr. or Mrs. It's kind of ingrained in me. Or well, let's talk to Elena to see what the best practice she would be. Said, Elena said in her email that I had to come to the board and ask for, and to vote on it. So I am I feel that that section of the notes needed to be best represented, that there were more that there was the parks and recreation, and I'm giving a quick summary, the village Mac police liaison, trustee liaison, Lou Young myself and everybody ha had agreed unanimously. And I think that there was a, a components missing that and, and it could be misread. And I, I would appreciate if it was in, in, in a better context. Do you have any comments? I read through that quick, but I'm just not sure how to physically go about it. You're saying that the edits would go on the bottom at the end as an addendum or they would be incorporated? It could go at, at, as whichever way they best fit. It could go in as an email addendum. The email could go in as an addendum and, 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 and approved. It doesn't have to be rewritten. So, Gary, do you have any comment about amending the minutes for July? Uh, I, I'm fine with that. Fine with what? Amending the minutes. I mean, if that's that's fine with me. So, you want to add everything that was suggested by by Laura to the July minutes? I guess so. Can we Let, let's just vote on it. I'd like to make another comment. Yeah, go for it. In we have to, in, we, in, we're, we're, we're going to cap this in two general minutes. general about minutes. Minutes are not designed to be a transcript or a record of who said what. Um, it's a summary. It, it's a brief summary. I understand that Laura would like to include a lot of the information. We spent 40 minutes talking about Pay Park, 40 minutes. Um, and I think the minutes that are reflected in the, in the draft reflect pretty much what was important, what we decided to do, and what we voted on. Um, obviously, the way the minutes work in terms of amending draft minutes, the majority of the membership votes on what they want to do. So if the majority chooses to include everything that she wrote, so be it. I don't think that's, that's a good precedent um, because why are, we, why are we putting so much detail into that particular, there were 25 or so locations and, and topics that we covered in July in at the July meeting. Why are we focusing and putting three pages worth of notes and, and quotes into that particular discussion? 
why are we focusing so much importance on that and not on the other 20, 25? I, I don't understand that. Well, I have a question. When the minutes when the minutes are updated, wouldn't it just be updated with with just bullet points? I mean, I, I, I'm forgive me. This is new to me how this how this kind of works. So, but isn't that how we would update the minutes in a simple simple fashion? So, from a, a purely technical standpoint, the only requirement that minutes have to uh, account for is motions. Of votes and a record a record of the votes, that's that's the minimum. You know, I, I how you want to prepare your minutes, as long as you do the bare minimum, everything else is kind of gravy. That's that's your yeah. I mean, that, that's that that's kind of what I'm going to do. I mean, it's going to uh, otherwise. Yeah, no, Gary, and that's fine. That's fine. The question pages, is if, forty pages long. I mean, I've Gary, it's job. fine. So it doesn't have to be that. Not, we, we don't have consensus on what to do with the minutes. We're not approving the July minutes. Okay. I want to move on. I want to end the meeting because this is not productive. It's not productive for me. It's not productive for each other to be yelling at one another. And we're not, I'm as the chair, we're not approving the July minutes. We're going to approve the oh. main minutes. Does anyone have a problem with that? No. We we'll put it up for vote. Gary, do your best with the minutes. They don't have to be yes. a novel. You're the that's, volunteer like we all that's are. That's all I can do. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to make a motion to close the meeting. Thank you. So, yeah. Oh, do you want a second? You, did you make a motion? Yeah, I made the motion. I second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, thank you, guys. Sorry, I just didn't think it was productive anymore. Fair enough.